Season 3 is where the show goes backwards. Season 1 and 2 are mainly arc focused, building towards the new commonwealth. They finally get it. They stop the aliens trying to prevent the formation, thanks to trance, but then the show goes in an episodic route. The only really good part, season three fleshes out Trance even more. She has more than just the ability to sense things. She actually lives in alternate timelines with her having the power to choose which one she wants. And since she wants to help Dylan reform the Commonwealth and stop the Magog, she and us enter those timelines. It sounds like a day you ask, oh, well, she can control where to go. How can anything bad happen now? She has the power to go through, but not to change. So if she, say she entered a time where the Commonwealth was restored, everyone was happy, but Hunt was killed, she can't change that. Her only option would be to find another timeline where Dylan wasn't killed, then try to help and fix it from that point. Trance does have limitations, as well as self-imposed limits in altering the timeline. A whole episode highlights her time-traveling powers, showing that her choices can make things worse, such as Harper being killed while trying to prevent the death of Tyr. The writers attempt to keep her powers from becoming problems. It didn't always work. There are times when you would ask, why not use her abilities here or change this moment? The season three cliffhanger ends with Tyr leaving Andromeda along with the Nietzscheans leaving the Commonwealth, led them into a trap. So basically, it was a repeat of what happened in the pilot. Season four is where everything goes crazy. This is not the bad point, but it annoys you in some ways. Trance's backstory is almost fully revealed. It's pretty out there on top of the Magog world ship that's still coming. Plus, this is where Tyr dies. It's totally out of character. I don't know if this was a jab at him wanting to leave or what, the reason why season four is mostly crazy is because the entire writing staff was changed. They went into another direction again. They went back to arcs and they brought all the leftover threads to the forefront again. But the Cliff Note version, Tyr wanted to stop the Magog at all costs and rule his people. So he teamed up with people called the Abyss. It goes into this God Messiah stuff. He needs them to find the route of ages. It's a portal in space time where they can meet the Peridians. This shows ancients, highly evolved using their power to get rid of the Magog. Like did the Stargate Atlantis writers copy Andromeda? This pathway through the galaxies also can weaken the Abyss so Tyr can get rid of them as well. This all falls apart. Dylan is betrayed by the new Commonwealth. He helped form by lies and manipulation of the new government. The theme of this season is everyone Andromeda is used by bad guys. Each episode, someone gets forced to do things. Becca being mind controlled, Harper's kidnapped a few times, all while trying to stop all these factions and magic races, including Rami. She is forced to make a decision that the ship AI version of her doesn't agree with, separating the Android version from the ship. Andromeda's AI episode is one of the best episodes that explored the differences between an AI and a human. It gave Rami and Andromeda different perspectives on the goals of protecting the crew, not to mention gave Harper a chance to show off his love in helping out Rami. The show underutilized Harper too much. You love him because he's funny, condescending, screws up a lot, but his caring heroic side gets neglected. It's why I like the Rami Harper duo. Their clashing natures bring out these good moments for the two characters. While season four really messed up Tyr, it showed us that they can write for the other characters. It's one of the most annoying things about the series. It has peaks of bad writing followed by great writing. Dylan is trying to stop people from finding the route, which leads them to a group of people called the Arcology. They live on this massive space station orbiting a planet, which is their next target. These people are pacifists, refuse to take any form of action, move the station, leave on ships. Dylan tries to reason with them. They don't listen to Hunt's warning, so Dylan is forced to stay and fight a no-win scenario. Oh, I should also point this out. Remember Rade who betrayed Dylan in the pilot? His family line still exists 300 years later. So a great, great grandson who looks just like him meets up with Hunt. He helps stop evil Tyr and joins the show as his replacement. Another problem is the writers tried very hard to get me to hate Tyr and for me to like the second Rade. He would find Harper's jokes funny, be more honorable than Tyr, and really suck up to Hunt. 
It was obvious that they knew Tyr was extremely liked and needed to be torn down as much as they could, using any bits of early Tyr they could use to justify the story. It just screamed, I'm trying to manipulate you. The crew gets thrown into hell. Harper is captured by Magog. Rade is surrounded by Magog. Becca is presumed dead. Rami's droid body is destroyed. Magog flood the ship. This just leaves Trance and Dylan. The finale shows off what Trance can really do. Trance is a part of a race of suns. Yes, suns as in stars. They have the ability to transform between their sun states and human states. That's why she has all these different types of abilities. Basically, the Abyss has been controlling countless species over hundreds of thousands of years. She was hidden, so during the final confrontation with the Magog, because of her protecting her friends and Dylan's dream, she told them to leave the ship and pulls a Hail Mary, supernovaing in her sun state, damaging the Magog world ship. While the cliffhanger ending on Dylan seeing a copy of himself walking away. It's, so it's finally time to bring up season five. Season four was crazy. Trance is a sunlight. Okay. If Zan can be a plant lady, fine. Season five didn't suck because of writers. It sucked because of financing. Andromeda was one of the last shows to be made in first run syndication. Little history lesson here. Syndication was stations showing old shows in certain times. The series would have X amount of episodes, usually a hundred, and stations would buy them in packages to show. They would air them in non prime time slots. Star Trek started the trend where you'd get a new TV series would run it like a syndicated show. The market for this was dying while the series was running, but the nail in the coffin was the companies that owned Andromeda were bought out by others who didn't want the show. The only reason why this fifth season was made was they just had signed all the contracts before the buyout happened. But that didn't mean the new owners didn't screw them. They cut the budget so far, forcing season five to take place on a planet in a few crap sets basically talking and finding the crew through 60% of the season. Andromeda is disabled, stuck in orbit, Trance is low on power after she's supernova and sending everyone to this hidden solar system. Rami's droid body was destroyed, so Harper gave her a new body. This happened because of Lex's pregnancy between seasons four and five, so the writers created a new character called Doyle, another android that Harper created to house Rami's core functions while he tried to repair her original body over the three years they were trapped in the pocket universe. Doyle wasn't just a copy of Rami, she did have her own personality. Harper wanted her to be more human, so he programmed her to see things like coolant links as blood. The ruse eventually failed. Harper went clean to Doyle, but she remained as Harper's bodyguard through the remainder of the series. Eventually, Rami was finally restored and put back into her original body. Doyle is basically seen as Rami's sister. They don't work together that well. Maybe it's because she wants to be human and not a droid. A lot of hatred was built up after what Dylan pulled in the last season. He had left everyone because he was forced to protect Arcology from the Magog. Most of them felt slighted by his decision. Even though the show has gotten so many writer changes, motivations and actions of the characters have been pretty consistent, Martyr. There's also some huge reveals during the final season. So while a load of episodes are complete crap, it does make up some with these crazy twists. Where they are is the lost system Tarn Vedra. This is a place where the Commonwealth was first formed by the Vedran race. Trance was this system's sun. That's why the system is in this weird state of time and using two artificial suns. Her memories returned when the moon of the system found her. Basically like the ascended ancients in Stargate, they saw humans as nothing. Trance cared about humans, so she left her people. With the system in this temporal state, other crazy stuff happened. The very first Nietzschean found his way to the system somehow. In this bizarre time loop, he saw Becca as a woman of high regard. So she inadvertently became the race's matriarch. That formed 16 generations before the first episode. You thought Farscape had some crazy episodes? Andromeda did some doozies. If the most revered Nietzschean steals DNA from Becca, just like how T repeats this with his son, all I see is the clan as backstabbers. So Tyr never really had honor. Now about Dylan, he's not your regular human, and I don't mean his genetically altered side. He's the last surviving Paradin. Paradins are the first race of sentient beings in the universe. They kept this ambiguous, but Trance describes them like a paradigm is always present for creation or for events of great importance. 
Dylan was destined to restore the Commonwealth after its fall and creating a new one. There's subtle clues to his origin right from the beginning. Remember I said his father was a gardener? He loved to create things. Dylan gave a new beginning to his crew. Trance is a sun, the start of all life. If you have to give the show one theme, it's beginnings. So how does this show end? With the help of Trance, her people, while not liking to get involved, to stop the abyss, they plan to wipe out all life in the universe, with the only place surviving is the Vedra system, since it's in a parallel pocket universe. Andromeda was repaired across those boring episodes. So Dylan has to stop the Abyss, the Magog, the Nietzscheans, and now Trance's people. No pressure. And they did give us a moment to finally see Earth before the series finale. Harper intended to return to Boston once all the nonsense was over, but the Nietzscheans blew it up. The show kind of goes through the Mass Effect 2 ending, where the whole crew has to do so many things to stop everything. Dylan's paradigm ability allows him to see things that even Trance can't. Her senses are like a sledgehammer, while Dylan can act like a fine comb in details. So while Hunt dealt with the Nietzschean faction that blew up Earth, they have Andromeda go back through the route of ages, towing Trance's son through it, wiping out the abyss, and forcing the Magog and Nietzscheans to stop. Yes, it is a rushed ending. There's conveniences everywhere. I have to be fair. Trance and Dylan finding out their true powers and all of a sudden they can do X to move the plot forward. It's not good writing. The ending of the series I thought is fine, a hundred times better than what EFC did. Besides half of season five being garbage, Doyle suffers from lack of real development coming in so late. The budget cuts, Rev Bem not helping out in the last episodes, and of course the failure of Tears character are the major problems the series had. Dylan still wasn't totally fixed even after they focus on him more. What's annoying is that his paradigm story, if it happened earlier in the series, would have been a good way to expand on him, get to know his parents better, and actually talk about what a paradigm is, not trance mumbo jumbo. Along with Dylan and trance being Dayuex moments for the end, the show needed at least one more season to really give the series a closure. Those are really all of the bad. Other than that, I'm happy that the writer changes at least kept the show on track. I personally didn't mind the whole mysticism aspect of the show, but there are times it clashes with the science part. Overall, I suggest checking out the show. It is a worthy series under the Gene Roddenberry name. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on a lookout for obscured stuff.